All right, yes, Chris. Uh, now we are here. Darren, my masked friend, you're taking corona very seriously. You've got to stay safe. You have to stay safe. That's a yeah. fair mask too. But it's hiding yeah. the, the moustache, mate. It's not going to help you with the... You want to see the mo? You yeah, I have to. That's what it's all about. There we go. Yeah, nice. Nice. Good. You got the full the full look happening. Well, you've got to you've got to play the part. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for getting me involved in this uh, chat as well. Always good to talk Movember and try and raise some funds. Uh, I've 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 put a comment in there for people watching where you can donate. Let me just check if we're all good on Facebook because you never know if you're happening if it's going live or not, Darren. Mm. Can never never trust this. Oh, it is. It seems to be working. So that is all good. Okay. Seems to be all happening. Just want to set the link so people know that they can donate if they want to uh, get involved in this as well. Okay. Perfect. Oh, I just want to shut that off now. Perfect. Awesome, mate. So how's it been going? How's the, the month going for November for you? Is it um, a bit different this year? It's Well, I think it's had to be different. I think November or Movember, as I call it, uh, has been different for everybody around the world. I don't think anybody's uh, had a November like this where you've been basically uh, locked in your homes, unable to really go out apart from to, to, to work or to, to shop yeah. uh, all of the cultural uh, and all, all the things that have where you can have fun are all on lockdown so uh, yeah obviously that that still spills out into my Movember month and uh, mm -hmm. raising any any uh, funds and stuff for Movember is also affected a little bit yeah exactly because I think that's where we met I think it was 2016. I was one of the performers yeah. on one of your nights. Uh, yeah, one of your, one of your was, comedy nights uh, for. Yeah, one of the uh, comedy that, that we did with uh, Neil Numb and Darmanda there in the yeah. middle, and uh, they'd obviously uh, been in touch with you previously, and I said that there's this guy uh, is a good comedian because obviously I, I know the scene a little bit from my my earlier uh, dalliance with with the English comedy in Berlin as well. Yeah, uh, and they obviously said this this guy, and he, he was he was up for it doing it as well. And obviously, I think we've been friends since. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, and you encouraged me to, which I really appreciate to to uh, get into November last year. I don't know if that's because you wanted extra help, or you just wanted me to lose that big beard I had well, at I the know. time. <laughs> You had a, you obviously had a beard, and I think you shaved it for the the performance as well. So obviously, I I know you with Mo. Yeah. Uh, even if it was just a trimmed version of of the Mo, and not necessarily a grown Movember Mo, a uh, fresh one, should we say? Yeah. Well, last year was the proper shave off, uh, and then started again. But like when I looked at doing Movember this year, I thought it was going to be quite difficult. That's why I got to give you a lot of praise for pushing through and doing it this year. I think this is how many years have you done it in a row now? This now is is my ninth year. Um, so 2011 was the first time. I think 2010 I thought about it, but I, or I'd heard about it, or whatever, and yeah, but it sounded like uh, you know a weird thing. But uh, I was thinking about it earlier that. Uh, Obviously, that was my first one, and uh, it was obviously nine nine years ago, ten years ago. Uh, that would have been I would have been sort of thirty eight. Yeah, and I just think uh, that was my first mustache, and I just think right. obviously there's plenty of things you can do in life that are free, uh, and obviously as a man uh, growing a mustache at the age of thirty eight is leaving it quite late. Yeah. Really. So, yeah, indeed. Uh, did you were you one of the first in in Germany then? Do you think? Because obviously it started in Australia, didn't it? So. Uh, I, mean, I wouldn't. Uh, no, not at all. I mean, obviously the when when we first did the first year there, yeah. um, I had to register myself on the UK website. Right. Uh, so anything that was being donated and and whatever, we all went through uh, 
the UK website. And it was only the following year um, that they actually got a German website up and running. Yeah. But uh, you couldn't even you couldn't uh, pay with. Uh, I think you could only pay with credit card. Which, of course, mm. uh, if you know any real Germans, they don't really like to use credit cards. No, no, they don't. Uh, they, you know, it's just bank transfer and whatever. And so the first the first year where it was a German one, they, there was sort of a, a lot of, uh, well, how do I make a donation and stuff without using a credit card? So it was it had its teething problems when it first got started. But uh, now, I mean, the, 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 the Movember guys, I, I know a few of them there. They're on top of things, and they're always in touch with various uh, sporting uh, teams and so on. Very big in the the handball uh, yeah. sport and, and uh, ice hockey as well. I've been to a few nights down at the Mercedes Benz Arena where they've had ice hockey uh, teams going on, and, and a lot of the guys wearing uh, wearing moustaches there as well. Uh, also in the football world here in Germany, the uh, I think in Schalke they had quite a few at the time uh, where they'd, they'd come on and done the Movember as well. So it, it, it depends. I mean, the, I think it's possibly a, a lesser known uh, charity here in Germany than mm -hmm. it is, you know, like you say, in Australia or the UK or whatever. Um, but, but, you know, that's just how it is. It's, it's just one of those things. Yeah, I noticed last year when I was doing it, if you could you could look at the leaderboard for for germany and there was a lot of great teams earning a lot of money actually or raising yeah. a lot of money i should say not only but yeah, yeah it's pretty, yeah, pretty I mean, popular now it's definitely it's definitely come a long way since since it's got started and i think that's the, one of the things I, I sort of think is is a good thing and sometimes uh a, a, a bad thing from my perspective or should i say a sad thing because obviously uh here, the, the whole dress up thing and, and whatever, I, I it used to be that it was a uh, bit of a gala party at the end of the month and, and whatever, and it was basically an excuse to get dressed up to show the mo off and yep. then to have a bit of a party because it was the end of the month. You've gone through uh, Movember, you've grown the mustache, you've sort of done the thing, and then it was sort of a yay, let's have a bit of a party, and it's it's over for this year, sort of thing. and. Mm. And that is obviously makes a, a lot is a lot more fun when it's done with friends and so on. Yeah. So um, you do see obviously a lot of people and they do it, but then obviously the, uh, the there's also quite a few where they're not quite up for sort of growing the mustache from the start, or obviously going out and and, and pushing to to have the conversation, etc. Yeah. Um, so from that expect you know from. I think the last time, uh, obviously, I got dressed up here as the Mo Ranger uh, yeah. a few years ago. This was one of the last ones. Uh, I ended up actually going. The, a friend, uh, Chris, uh, mentioned it the other day, and he was saying that he, he was he's laughing his head off because uh, another friend, um, Jono uh, from Crazy Bastard Sauce, mm -hmm. uh, got married, and he said that we're having a bit of a party. Can you get dressed up? And uh, obviously, it was sort of time for time for November, and, and I had all this get up or whatever. And I went into the middle of uh, the park, wearing my uh, ten gallon hat, hat here, sort of thing, and, and turned up at this this wedding party. But what he meant by getting dressed up was just be a bit smarter, putting on uh, a suit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and obviously, I just turned up looking like this. So. Yeah. Uh, it, it can be a, a lot of fun, I think, if you just let yourself have the fun with it, really. Yeah. Yeah, it's very good. But, yeah, very impressed, man, because 10 years is a, a fair a fair effort. And I was looking at your profile on the actual Movember page. Uh, you've raised nearly 4,000 euros, man, in that time. I mean, that's incredible work. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean I'm, I'm happy to get whatever, whatever I you know, whatever I can really for it. I mean, obviously, all they're all going towards these, uh, you know, they have some groundbreaking uh, projects going on worldwide with regards to the whole prostate uh, gland testing and, and so on and the uh, testicular cancer testing and stuff. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, uh, you know, some of the best praise that I've had about it all is when I've done a comedy evening and the, the, the father of a friend or whatever has then come over and said, uh, I've, I've had... Uh, 
prostate cancer and it all being, you know, it's all sorted now, but, you know, thanks for doing that. And that's what it's all about. If I can change, uh, get somebody to think about actually going to the doctors and, and getting checked, whatever it is, because obviously, uh, you know, you've got testicular cancer, that's sort of from active men sort of from sort of 50, uh, 15 to 39 years old. So mm -hmm. these, these aren't old men. These are, these are young yeah. men that need to get tested. And, you know, the best way to, seriously, the best way to uh, know, know what's happening there is to uh, keep in touch with your testicles. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it might, sound, it might sound daft, but obviously, you know, I'm a, I'm a 48 year old man and I think I, I probably first met my testicles when I was sort of 15, you know, so yeah. it's one of these things where uh, we, we get in touch with our, our body, we need to make sure uh, we know what normal is, mm -hmm. because then suddenly if you're actually checking them, there's a shape or size or a lump that wasn't there, then it's time to get in touch with the doctor, so yeah. you know, there's, there's stuff like that and Anybody who then suddenly decides, oh wait a minute, I'll go and I'll speak to the doctor, is is you know a lot lot better for me than than obviously the money that's raised. But both are equally as important. So it's really yeah. good. Yeah, I mean you raise a good point with that because yeah, the money of course it goes into uh, a lot of good uh, areas. But yeah, the conversation shining a light on on the mental health, on physical health, which men tend to ignore. You made a really good point. I was watching the chat you had with Chris Davis, and you made a very good point that for women, it's very normal part of their routine to see the gynecologist, to do this, to do that. For men, it's not unless it's until it's really a problem. Uh, men really aren't doing anything at all, generally speaking. Yeah, so, no, I mean, I think it, it, it is a is a uh, it's a theme that we have to be more proactive about. It's yeah. not sort of one of these reactionary things that where we find a a uh, a lump or you know you, you're starting having problems with the, the prostate and then it's found out afterwards. If we can get it so that people are being checked regularly uh, without this this they need because, like you say, the, the women they. You know, they go for a yearly checkup uh, to the to the gynae or whatever. You know, at least yeah. once a year. Uh, obviously, you know, they have the breast checks as well. So they're all, they're always doing that. But obviously, for us men, uh, it's not as not not as uh, forthcoming that we need to go. Um, so it's basically, no. basically breaking down uh, a couple of thought processes there. One that uh, you need to go and do this and go to the doctor, but also then. To actually be able to talk about these things and uh, openly, uh, and it be a normal thing now. I mean, yeah. Um, with regards to testing, now I go um, every year now when I do my Movember, I make it part of my Movember. I grow the mustache and I make an appointment to go to the doctors. And I was there on Tuesday morning, yesterday morning. Yeah. Um, for anybody over the age of forty-five, they can get the uh, the um, check for free sort of thing and yeah i mean as i as i joke it's you know it's it's the feel of the testicles to make sure everything's okay there and it's the old uh finger in the popo uh just to make sure that everything's there is is okay which yeah. uh, you know when when the doctor's there he knows the he knows the, the the feel of it or whatever but uh example this year as well i've actually done the whole uh psa test Mm -hmm. which is the uh, prostate-specific uh, antigen, the PSA, and that with that they're able to then, it, it's basically a blood test, but yep. they're able to then see whether there's any of these antigens in the blood uh, that could actually come forward and actually cause possibilities with uh, problems with prostate cancer. So, um, yeah, I, I, that's the first time I've done that this year because the, the other one is normally the check, but... Uh, you know why not? I, it's it's just a small check, and and I know I'm going to feel a lot better having had that done. So yeah, absolutely. And I think in the last couple of years, mental health became uh, a bit of the feature into November as well, which you know, I was very glad to see happen. And again, around the conversation of men coming together, sharing how they feel, uh, you know, 
not having any shame towards seeing a therapist or whatever anyone's going through. And I think that's really important as well. Yeah, well, I think the, the, the one thing that, I mean, obviously the, the, uh, what they're all about nowadays is uh, basically to reduce the amount of men dying uh, yep. prematurely by 25% by, by the year 2030. Now, that's only 10 years' time, but it's obviously a quarter of the, the, the men that are obviously dying now are, are all dying prematurely, and that means basically it's, uh, there's the possibility of stopping that. Uh, you know, it's not sort of one of these things where you get knocked over or whatever and it's it's out of the blue or whatever. These are things that if they're looked at previously, then obviously, you know, with regular checks and tests, you know, the whole uh, prostate cancer, the testicular cancer, they yeah. can actually, uh, you know, identify that early. But also within conjunction to that, like you say, the whole mental health um, if they're able to then actually uh, change somebody's attitude to with, with regards talking, uh, you know, the, 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 the idea that a guy can actually um, open his mouth and talk to a friend about how he's feeling and the, the possibility of stopping somebody from uh, going too far, you know, I mean, obviously suicide yeah. is... Is a is one of these things here, um, but if if we can change the conversation so that people actually uh, aren't scared of talking about any mm. of these subjects, yeah, then it's certainly going to help. And I think that's a that's a great uh, attitude to have. Yeah, I mean that's something. I mean I've tried to push as well, even outside of Movember, with podcasting and sharing some of my own story and things like that, and many conversations we've had together on the topic. And, yeah, it's very important. I think it, being honest and, and sharing can not only help you but help the other person. It's also a form of connection. Mm -hmm. and, and life, you know, it can, affect, it can affect us all. But if we all just hide that and wear a mask, then I always worry that those who are suffering, suffering they feel alone, even though there's so many people going through the same thing that just no one's spoken up about it. So I think any time we can sort of break the stigma and have conversations around mental, especially with men, where there's always been a shame, we've always got to toughen up, be a man, yeah. just get on with it, especially if we can break that, uh, it's very important because the male suicide rate is it's incredibly high, as you touched on, and uh, and I th a lot of it will be to that sort of the way our sons are raised, uh, the way that yeah. mentality is around, you know. Sorry, I just need to, I mean, obviously you mentioned here the, the whole mask thing, so it doesn't make any sense me wearing a mask if I'm unable to show my face. No. Uh, plus it's very warm. Um, but no, what I was going to say with, with regards to that is obviously, yeah, I mean, the whole uh, talking and, and whatever and, and having different attitudes. Um, I, I spoke to Chris last week and, and he'd obviously mentioned that he'd had a great conversation with his dad which he'd mm -hmm. not been had, had before, and the, the, the relationship between them had uh, changed uh, substantially with just within the last four months since, the, since his dad been able to actually open up a little bit and talk about it, it probably. And obviously I spoke about my, my uh, relationship with my father, and, you know, I mean, it, I'm not saying that it, it was a bad relationship, but obviously it it wasn't quite the relationship that I, I would have liked to have. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that, obviously, I, I've also then just pushed to try and make sure that my son can talk to me. Um, he's not quite got there yet. Uh, I know he's still, still got some, some way to go. But, yeah. uh, I, you know, obviously pushing for him to know that uh, I love him, that, that he can talk to me openly about stuff, uh, whatever it might be. And mm. so on, and, and it, like you say, it's just changing that attitude that um, you know, to, so that people can feel the kind of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it was a different generation too. If you think our fathers and fathers before that, times have changed quite a lot now. But there's still so much work to do. And I think speaking up sometimes, you know, I've spoken up to friends about how I'm feeling or something like that, and it's quite terrifying at first. But afterwards the connection that can form and the bond it, through that truth, it becomes much stronger probably 
what you meant, like with Chris and his father, same sort of thing that once you sort of step out of that, you have the real chance to grow from your truth, you know? Yeah, well, I think one of the problems as well is uh, because a lot of these, a lot of the times, uh, it's like anything, I think with uh, not not men, but but generally as, as uh, people, um, as humans, we always seem to think that we're the only person in this hole. Mm. And that this thing, the only thing that's happening here is just happening to us. And it's only through talking that then you can find out that there are other people going through the same feelings, the same yeah. thoughts, the same worries, and so on. And, and, and with that, it sort of builds, builds a momentum, momentum sort of thing within yeah. it all. And you can then feel, wait a minute, I, you know, somebody else feels like this as well. It's okay to feel like this. We can talk about it. You've then obviously then got somebody you can talk to about yeah. these, these things. And with that, you can then sort of possibly be more open about the problems mm -hmm. because, you know, the whole, the whole uh, talking about problems, you know, I mean, obviously it gets said a lot, but it does help, you know. Yeah. You know, if there's something that's weighing on your mind and you're, you're worried about something or whatever, then they're just – Letting letting it off your chest and somebody explains, so oh, well, no, it's you'll be fine. There's no reason to worry because we all worry. It's it's a inbuilt reaction to all of yeah. this you know, to life. So it's yeah. always good to sort of open up and talk and, and get you know sharing those feelings. Yeah, I always encourage people to share because it, you don't know who you can save with that, even if it's online or, you know, some people have been written a very long Facebook post even, which would have been very scary revealing, you know, their darkest truth or whatever. But then if you look at the comments, so many people are like, thank God somebody said it or so you don't know the impact you can have by sharing. And that person who may be suffering alone then realizes, wow, I'm not the only one. Or, I mean, I think that's how uh, you and I became close because you were very honest and I, I came to you with some of my problems at the time a couple of years back. And, yeah. you know, we were football mates as well. We were, we were watching football, beer, and, and still having these sort of conversations, which, you know, I'm still very grateful for and appreciate them very much. So, yeah, it really does help. It really does help for sure. Yeah, I just think it's one of those things that once you've once you've got onto that plateau and realised that there's nothing to be scared of, then you can sort of talk, talk more openly. You know, I mean, um, it's like like I, I said to Chris as well. I mean, I sort of opened up a little bit um, from where I was with regards uh, my mental health, and mm -hmm. I think that's why, why obviously also as well when I first started uh, doing the whole moving the thing, you know, I do I do it because because I want to, I've been doing it uh, since since 2011. Yeah. Uh, and some people say, "Why do you do it?" I said, "Well, because I can. Because because uh, it costs nothing to grow a mustache. Um, you know, and, and obviously there's people that have mustaches all year round. But for me to then grow a mustache and then somebody say, "Good, you know, what's why have you got a mustache or whatever?" Then it's the start of the conversation. Yeah. And it's these conversations that need to be had. And with that, um, you know, I, I sort of learned to sort of open up a little bit myself and realize mm -hmm. uh, from my time where, you know, I was also in therapy and, and talking. And uh, it's like I said to Chris as well the last time that, that the, the one thing about you is go and see a therapist. And, you know, I mean, obviously we don't pay here, but, you know, you're seeing all the films that go along and, talk to the therapist and they think they're going to get all the, the answers and the therapist just ums and ahs and makes scribbles on their notepad and whatever and then you come back next week and you've figured it out yourself but it's yeah. just you've been able to throw these out ideas out there uh openly talking about them and sort of openly should we say openly thinking about them uh without any any of them just being clogged up in the head and, and you know just being dark yeah it's also uh, an objective view. I mean, you can go to your friends for support, but a lot of them are going to have a bias towards you. You know, you're their friend. So sometimes it really helps to have that neutral position to talk to where they will speak to you back on the terms of just the reality they're presented with. 
that's a great way yeah, to get advice. I, I mean, I think I think there's there's obviously it's, it's I think there's a bit of a joke about it. When you're being honest, basically, if you if you're the the person who's being honest about things, then suddenly you're the asshole because yeah. you shouldn't be honest about you. You know, oh, your your beard looks really nice there, or whatever, or say no, it looks a bit dodgy. You know, whatever. It's then sort of being too honest for for your own good, sort of thing. And I think you've obviously got to hit a. Uh, a, a middle line there somewhere along the lines and say you know obviously if you're gonna talk to me about your your problems or, or whatever's going on then i should at least be listening to you and give you some honest feedback i mean yeah you know whatever I, I tell you whatever is is my perspective on these problems you're mm -hmm. whether we don't talk about it and you're the only person with these problems yeah okay you might be able to talk about it and find somebody else with the same problems but you are the only person in your family, in your position with your problems. So they are yeah. just as individual as you. Yeah. But you can also always get another person's perspective on those problems. It might be the, the right answer, it might be the wrong answer, but at least you've had it. And without actually talking, then you wouldn't have that in the first place. Yeah, exactly. And good friends should pull you up to where they see not just do that but that's the benefit i find of uh, of having a therapist or something like this it's just you get that neutral view that they don't owe you any favors they're not doing it because you looked after them last time and they can they have no problem just telling the truth of the matter of it so yeah exactly yeah got some comments here hello to robert grant checked in said hello hello M marcus with the mo ranger yeah, he got you the Mo Range. He knows that. Yeah, perfect. Was there anything else? How, how how do you? I probably should have asked this at the start because people might have been listening for half an hour with not much of an idea. But how do you explain what you do with Movember in short? So you say you meet someone like at a station now, and they they ask about the the moustache. What's the spiel you have in in short to give them? I think obviously. You know, a lot of people worldwide know what Movember is, especially if, if you obviously know me. Um, yeah. It's obviously the, the month of November where people shave, uh, get freshly shaved, and then grow a moustache. And that's why it's Movember, moustache, Movember, and sort mm -hmm. of November. Um, but basically, it all got started a few years back with some friends from Melbourne where they were talking uh, – crap one evening about why nobody's wearing any mustaches anymore and just for a laugh uh they decided to get some friends i think about 30 of them in 2003 decided to grow a mustache and they had a party at the end of the month uh, in december for somebody's birthday um mm -hmm. and that's sort of where it all got together and it, it, it's one of those things with, which echoes with men being friends and just doing some idiotic thing you know like like yep. we do you know yep. it's what we call what we call fun uh mm -hmm. obviously with 30 men you're going to get some that can grow mustaches some that can't go grow mustaches some that grow ridiculous mustaches and all of this is obviously in the name of fun and that's how it was that that evening obviously the following year uh there was that many people asking them about doing it and they started it again and had to have a reason what they was going to do and because of it being a you know prostate cancer is a man only thing yeah uh, you know testicular cancer you know it's not one of those things cancer generally okay it affects uh, men and women and so on but uh, mm. with with the men so obviously that's when they uh, decided to then look into the testicular cancer the prostate cancer causes and funding yeah. projects all over and from 30 moustaches in 2003, they have over 5 million uh, Mo Bros and Mo Sisters. This is the, the, yeah. the lady that help out as well uh, throughout the world now. So, um, yeah, that is Movember. Uh, ideally, it's it's about having a moustache and doing the talk and, and trying to change um, the face of men's health. Mm -hmm. uh, but... You know, at the end of the day, it's also a bit about having a bit of fun as well with some friends. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's such an incredible turn that it's it's taken from them. But I remember 
reading about them as well, the the original guys who did it, and they're like, you know, we're so good at doing things for breast cancer, you know, and I think like the, in for cricket in Australia, the Sydney uh, Test match is always uh, for breast cancer. Everyone wears pink, and I think they took a lot from that. Yeah. They're like, well, what are we doing for us? No one's, you know, we should start something, and it's and it's just like we said before that men are a bit poorer at going to the doctor and getting checked out and things like that so yeah it's really nice to see it's not only you also do the walking for november too you've been doing a bit of that yeah yeah well like i say we have had to adapt this month and uh initially the website here that i set up movember lynn uh, was originally about uh me organizing events and so on in, around berlin you know comedy events music spoken word here with yeah. rob brown um and that was the case and obviously it's, it's great but obviously suddenly you're in a, a covid 19 lockdown and there is no events there is no going out there is no meeting up and so uh as well as me trying to be a bit more sort of vocal online like we are now um i've also taken on board move for november which um they started a few years ago and it it goes on the lines obviously keeping healthy and, and, and uh, keeping fit whilst uh, whilst doing that and I think originally you know the idea of doing 60 kilometers uh, for the month and um, because we're in lockdown because the only thing I can do is either go out and do sport or sit at home mm -hmm. um, I decided to take that on board this year and I've been doing move for November um, I've done about a hundred and one kilometers so far so I'll probably go out stuff. after this as well so yeah, really good. Well, how can people donate? I've shared the Facebook link here so you can click. They can also find you on the Movember website too. Yeah, yeah. I'm also, I can I can post that later, the, the Movember di directly. Uh, you can donate there. Obviously, anybody who's interested in, in doing this, I mean, obviously, there's only a few days left of Movember this year, but uh, yeah. obviously it starts again this time next year. Uh, yep. anybody willing to share any of this stuff to any friends because obviously somewhere somewhere along the lines you know you this friends and family uh, that have either been affected by testicular or, or prostate cancer or also somebody that you know that's actually uh, committed suicide and, and you know um, it's it's a hard thing so anybody willing to help uh, or donate as, as we've said is uh, very much appreciated but also, like you said, get get checked to start talking to your friends, check on your yeah. friends, hit the doctors. It's, yeah, I mean, it's 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 hard because obviously I, I try and push for that. And, and there's always, like I say, the stigma attached to actually going to the doctors and, and having the, the check there. It's all a joke at, at first, but then obviously when it is actually happening, then it's, it's not so serious. But uh, it is yeah. a serious subject. And despite the whole uh, get up and fun aspect of it, it's also for mm -hmm. a good, good cause. Yeah, well, that's good, man. I mean, I appreciate what you're doing. Ten years is a fair stint, um, and I'm gonna—I'll be back on the train next year too. I think. Yeah, well, that's that's ten years, and hopefully, we'll be out of lockdown, and we can arrange arrange a nice uh, event here in Berlin as well. Yeah, and a bit of a party afterwards to get the proper party yeah. at the end of the month. Yeah, <laughs> bring the Mo Ranger back. Cool, yeah. mate. Well, thanks for having a chat. Um, and thanks for watching, anyone out there who's watching. And, uh, yeah, don't forget to donate and uh, speak to you soon. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Thank thanks, you, Darren. Everybody. Cheers, mate.